Have you ever looked at your own abdomen and noticed that there was a gap uh, between your two muscles? Or have you ever looked at a newborn baby and saw that when they cried, you could see like a noticeable little cone that came up? So this is what we're gonna talk about today. This is something known as diastasis recti. So diastasis recti just means separation of the abdominal muscles or the six pack muscles. That separation, um, it can be caused by multiple things. And it's not actually the muscles, you know, tearing or ripping or anything like that. There's actually a piece of connective tissue between the muscles that's called the linea alba and it stretches. It's supposed to stretch. So during pregnancy, this is the example that I'm going to use. During pregnancy, um, that linea alba has to stretch to accommodate that growing baby. Otherwise, if your belly was not able to stretch and those muscles weren't able to move, um, your pressure would probably go all under your ribs and all down your pelvic floor. So really it's kind of protective that we have that, um, it's protective that we have that muscle stretching and able to uh, accommodate for the growing baby. It's absolutely gonna happen during pregnancy. The thing that kind of makes people nervous is after pregnancy when they're still noticing that gap. So some signs to look out for. You might notice that if you sit up in bed abruptly, you see like a coning shape or like a little dome. Sometimes it just looks like a round um, area. It may feel uncomfortable through there. It may feel soft and squishy to the touch. Um, you may be able to feel like you can really press all the way down through there. So that is very common. Actually, I've got some stats for you. So 60% uh, of women at six weeks postpartum will still feel that separation. And then uh, up to 33% or about a third of women will still feel that uh, 12 months postpartum. So it's a very common condition to have in postpartum. Um, not everyone is symptomatic. Sometimes I will assess uh, patients that come into my clinic and they'll say, hey, will you check my stomach for diastasis recti? Maybe they saw it on the internet. And I'll check it out and say, yeah, you do have a little bit of a separation. And they never even knew and it wasn't causing them any problems. This condition doesn't just happen in women. At the beginning, I talked about um, seeing it in babies. A lot of times it can happen in babies. It can even happen in males. Um, but for this, this video's purposes, we're gonna talk about specifically uh, diastasis recti postpartum. So um, during pregnancy, it's common, but we're gonna talk about after you've had the baby, and your belly is still looking like you are five months pregnant. Typically with mild to moderate cases, physical therapy and guided exercise can absolutely improve the symptoms that you're having with diastasis recti. So um, only about less than 1% are actual surgical candidates because to be a surgical candidate, it should the gap should be over five centimeters. Um, it, it, you know, based on a few different studies I was looking at, and so they estimated that only like 0.7 percent of uh, separations are actually over that five centimeters. So if I get somebody in the clinic, the first thing that we'll look at um, whenever we're checking that diastasis is how wide it is. Um, so I usually like to start right at the belly button, and first I just use my fingers. So you know, here's the patient's belly button. I'll take, I'll start with like two fingers and see if I can sink that my fingers right into their belly button. And if I can feel both sides of that muscle, um, then I'll just stop there. But if I need more room, I'll use, you know, three fingers. I can put my fingers tighter. And that's just kind of like a qualitative assessment. So I'll look at their belly button and then I'll go a couple inches above and a couple inches below. So after I've kind of got, you know, kind of my landmarks, I'll take my measuring tape and I'll actually measure from one side of the rectus abdominis to the other and see how big of a separation that they have. I also like to measure how long it is because that can sometimes tell us, um, you know, some information and gives us an objective measure to look at whenever we're moving forward and trying to get this um, issue resolved. There are a few different ways to measure it. Um, you can use calipers. You can also use your fingers like I, ta like I talked about. Um, and another thing that's some people are using these days, it's called real-time ultrasound. So that's really cool because you can use that to actually um, help your patient like visualize the muscles themselves and help train those muscles as well. So it can be used as an evaluation technique and also a treatment technique. Once we've assessed the distance between the two rectus muscles and we've also looked at the length, another important thing to consider is the depth. So I will see how far my fingers can sink into um, the belly. So someone who can generate some tension underneath that, underneath my fingers through that linea alba and my fingers don't go very far, um, that tells me a lot compared to somebody who cannot 
have any tension through there and I can just keep going and going um, down you know as far as as far as I can uh, one of my coursework they actually said that sometimes that can be severe enough to where you can actually feel the spine feel the body of the vertebrae in the back touch all the way through so I definitely feel like I've maybe felt some organs before um, so yeah it just depends on the the depth as well so the reason that is important you want to be able to we talked about that linea alba that piece of connective tissue between those abdominal muscles you want to be able to generate tension across that so that's what's going to help keep you functional and what do I mean by generating tension whenever you go to sit up or turn or move you're going to want to be able to contract those deeper muscles um, that are also connected to that linea alba to try to help um, straighten that out and just make it more stiff so you can think about it like if it's not contracted it's kind of loose and when it's contracted it's stiff so you can get equal pressure going through your abdomen this can help you move around more comfortably it can help protect you from lower back pain from pelvic floor issues from difficulty uh, breathing correctly lots of things so the probably the most important thing to remember with diastasis uh, recti rehabilitation is that you're not looking to necessarily close the gap or bring those muscles closer together but you're looking to generate better tension throughout that area I have definitely seen women who you know still have a two finger or three finger gap even but they don't cone anymore they don't have like the doming effect whenever they go to sit up because they've learned how to engage those deeper abdominal muscles and um, they're able to move around freely without without any pain or without any symptoms so that's our assessment of diastasis recti we talked about the the width width the depth and the length so now we'll kind of get into what we do for rehab so the most important thing for our rehab like i said is not closing the gap it's making sure you're strong underneath that gap so uh, what we like to do is something called transverse abdominus setting first so this is the deeper layer so it's underneath that six-pack muscle it's a big broad muscle that wraps all the way around and it's what's going to help you stabilize that core um, so we make sure that you can do that in all positions we want you to be able to do it laying on your back standing up sitting up moving around um, so we'll work through different exercises to make sure you're engaging that deep core then eventually we want to progress that to doing the movements that you can't do without um, you know those abdominals separating a little bit so for instance a lot of times you'll read online like do not do crunches do not do sit-ups if you have a diastasis and I say that's a big like it depends because I've definitely worked with women who are able to get back into doing like sit-up motion without the symptoms without seeing that coning of their belly um, and without having any pain so I would say never say never it's a good rule of thumb to maybe not like go straight to that you want to work with a professional who can help guide you um, in the correct way to do those exercises but it's definitely not out of the question to say that you can never do something I really don't like uh, you know side note I do not like speaking in absolutes because you should never think like that um, never say never the main goal of our exercises with um, diastasis recti rehab is to help you become functional so we will ask you what is your goal do you want to be able to lift your toddler without any pain or without any gapping or um, without any like discomfort in your belly then great let's work toward that um, do you just want to make sure you can roll out of bed without feeling that feeling then sure let's do that so it's really about individualized treatment um, it's important to get assessed like I said by a professional who can help guide you uh, on the right on the right path but definitely know if you have a mild or moderate uh, case of diastasis recti you can certainly get help for it and um, you can live the life that you want to thanks for watching if you have any questions please leave them in the comments um, I'd love to know your experience with this condition if you do have it and remember it doesn't even just have to be pregnant ladies or postpartum ladies men can absolutely have it and kids so if you have any personal experience please let me know and uh, make sure to like and subscribe